welcome to an Everyday Canines video. This is the Running Contact series and in this episode I'm looking at my second type of freddle. So we've done the freddle type which I think is the one you're going to mostly see in competition but there is a potential that you might see a freddle loose. Now this is an awkward one because how often would I actually ask my dog to do a freddle loose if I had other options handling? Well I wouldn't. Let me put it this way, I'm coming down this dog walk, I am that side. I'm coming down and I know that my dog needs to go around the back and over that way. Why wouldn't I rear cross the dog walk and do this just as a backside and ask my dog to turn towards me? There's always that possibility, however, that you could have got in the wrong place. You're in the wrong place, it's an emergency, I need to do this. And it doesn't hurt to teach this and have this here. It could be that for whatever reason, I'm right down here when I send on the dog walk and actually this becomes the easier option for me. Who knows? But it is the option that probably the least likely I'm going to see in a competition. But again, it's there. We've done it. We've taught it. It's another way of proofing your contacts as well, because every time you add these little levels of challenge in, you're, you're adding a level of proofing, saying you still do a running contact even when you've got this. Okay, so let me talk what I mean by a freddle loose. Freddle loose means the dog comes to the backside and jumps long. So they're always going away from me and loaf over there. So let me get a sweet and just show you what that looks like. As with everything, we are going to be teaching this on the flat first. Now, I'm going to be honest with you there. Mostly when I do a freddle loose, I am that side of the jump and I don't do it from behind. So that is one of our little weak areas. Okay, so can I just sit you here? Sit. I would be here. Come, yeah, good girl. So that's what I would do on that. So this is the little training exercise. I've got to teach this from behind because I haven't done that. On the arms again. Now again, in the past, people would have used the off arms. The dog would come, they'd have gone like this and flicked. Used to call it as a check mark, actually. Used to say it's like a check because you're going down and flick. These days, most people, um, if they can help it, they're going to use their drive arm again. It's easier, it's faster for the handler, it's less twiddly twirling and, you know, enables them to come around and keep driving. I'm going to have to obviously work this backwards because I haven't got it from behind. So I'm going to have to start with myself ahead. So I'm going to set her up. Come. Yes, good girl. Good girl. Okay, so... Good girl, can you be on there? So that was with me right in front. Let's see if I can do it when I'm here. Come, jump. Good girl. I was slow on my throw, but you need it. As I'm doing a lot of distance handling these days, it's actually quite handy to have something like this in my tool bag. Come, jump. Oh, we're, we're doing this really nicely, actually. I am actually surprised at how well she's doing. But then I should never be surprised, should I, with you, Swift? You're a genius. Okay, sit. I'm going to make it really interesting now. I'm going to be here. Come, jump. Now, because I'm behind, I am adding that jump to tell her to jump long. She should be able to do that on just a come cue. But I'm adding that in just to make absolutely sure. Especially because we did friddle wraps in the last video, so there's still a little bit in her head. Okay, we need to add in a bit of dog walk now, don't we? So we've done it from the base of the dog walk. So the dog is understanding that I sit on the dog walk, or I pause here, and then I go and I do this. It's just a little stepping stone. Now we're going to add in the running contact. Now, you've seen Swift is really good at her contacts. And so as she makes my life easy, I don't tend to have to worry too much. But you may have a dog that as soon as you add in this complexity, they start to miss their contact. What do you do then? Well, at that point, then it might be worthwhile doing a couple of things. First off, that's why I start her in the contact zone or just above it, because it encourages that run through. Secondly, if your dog is really struggling with this, what you might do is ask them to run, reward, with a toy or something on the floor, and then do the behavior. And then what we're gonna do is gonna remove this reward here. So you don't wanna do it too many times because I'll get a pattern in it and then do the behavior there. But what we want to see is the ability to reward that contact as well as then adding in the freddle. Now, if you've got 
your dog doing the contacts lovely in all the other stages, you hopefully won't have that issue. But it's just something you might have to play with and look at. If you need help, have a second person watching this contact while you do what you need to do so they can tell you if your dog is getting it. The other reason why we only go so far up, good girl, wait, is again, we're aiming to have as limited failure room as possible. So by being here, she hasn't got a lot of room to go wrong. Go, come jump. Yeah, good girl. So it's lovely, beautiful. So you've done freddle tights, you've done freddle loose. Those are your two biggies in the freddle department and you've seen how we're working it back. Again, you add the lateral distance in, you add the distance back here and you keep building on it. As these behaviors progress, you want to start adding them into a course. So add another obstacle, whichever way you're expecting the dog to go next, add another obstacle. So that doesn't become the end because this is not gonna, very unlikely this will ever be an end of maneuver. It's like this will be in the middle of the course. So you need to keep adding on how many obstacles your dog can do after the dog walk so that they build up so they can do the dog walk anywhere on a sequence. Good girl. I hope you've enjoyed this Everyday Canines video and if you have you might subscribe to the YouTube channel and you click on the bell icon you'll get notifications of new videos and you can also find us on Facebook and Instagram and I hope to see you all again very very soon.